Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free eclairs or cream puffs. I'm actually going to show you both. It's the same batter or dough to make either of those. It took me many years to perfect this recipe to where I could get it to actually work. I know a lot of people are intimidated by cream puffs and eclairs, but I was really experienced with making them before I went gluten-free. And so I had a good idea of how they were supposed to work before I started attempting gluten-free cream puffs. The first few times I made them, they turned out like little flat pancakes. They wouldn't rise. If they did rise, they would sink, and then you couldn't fill them up with some pastry cream. It was a trial and error for sure. And I finally got it right. And I was so happy because I really missed cream puffs. I really enjoyed making them and I really missed eating them. They were one of my favorite things to eat. And so I'm so happy that I can share that with you. I've got everything ready. My oven is preheated to 425. I've got some cookie sheets lined with parchment paper. I've got two saucepans. One is for the pastry cream, which we're gonna do first. And then the other saucepan will be for the dough, which is called a, a pot of shoe or pat of shoe. I, it's pronounced different ways but it's the cream puff pastry dough. But before we get to the recipe, I am so excited to share with you my cookbook. My cookbook is finally here. It's finally ready. And now you can go and order it. I will put a link below for where you can get this. It is in two different versions. This is the actual printed version, as you can see, but there's also a Kindle version as well. It took me a lot longer to write this cookbook than I realized it would. I thought when I first took on this feat, I thought that I, I've written recipes before. No problem. All my recipes are all here already. Just make it a little bit easier for people to read and understand and put it all together and you're done. But there's a lot more that went into it than that. In my cookbook is 129 recipes. And the font size is actually... I think a really decent size. And I do have some pictures in here. There's not pictures for every recipe. I really wanted to focus on the recipes rather than pictures. I, I did want pictures in here so you'll see what some of these will look like. But I also have my YouTube channel, which for some of these recipes, you can come over here and watch how it's made and see the end product as well. But I really wanted to make sure that I, I gave you a well-rounded cookbook that had a variety of things. Not just a specialty cookbook, but a little bit of everything from dinners to desserts. There are some fancier desserts in here, but for the majority, it's just regular everyday food that would be really good for somebody that is beginning to go gluten-free. I also realized in writing this cookbook that even though there's 129 recipes in here, Although it does say there's just 128 that I've numbered, but my flour recipe is in here too. So that would make it 129 recipes. But I've realized I have so many recipes that without making this the biggest book you've ever seen, I need to make cookbook number two. And I've already started putting recipes together for that. So if you're interested, if you really like this first volume, let me know and I'll keep working on cookbook number two. But this is a really good starting out cookbook for anybody that is going gluten-free. It has just a little bit of everything. And this is exactly what your copy will look like. Although my copy has a banner right here that says not for sale, but I'm so excited that it is here and you can go order your copy today. And please let me know what you think. I'm so excited to share this with you. When I first started doing my videos and in the beginning, a few people here and there would ask if I had a cookbook. More and more and more of you have requested a cookbook. And it makes me feel so good that you guys would like to have all of my recipes. I, just, I never even thought that I would ever have a cookbook. I never thought I would have a cooking show. And now within one year, I've got both. But it wouldn't be anything that it is without you guys watching and requesting this and making my recipes. I've got some family favorites in here and from my family, from my grandparents, um, my mom's recipes, just recipes that are passed down that now I get to share with you. 
all in this book right here. But at any rate, it is here, it is ready to go. I will put a link below so you can go right to it. So let's just prop this up. Look, I have a little napkin holder that can also be my cookbook holder for today. And to make it easy for you, I am on the cover so you know that it's me. And it's the same picture as my YouTube channel picture. So then you'll know for sure it's actually me. And of course my title, Jilly G's Gluten-Free Cookbook, I went with basic and simple because I am basic and simple and I think it was the perfect title for my book. But I am so excited that it is finally here and I hope you love it as much as I do. So now for the recipe for today. I hope you're as excited about cream puffs and eclairs that I am to share with you. As I mentioned, one of my favorite desserts growing up, it was always my favorite thing. If you ever went to a wedding or some kind of fancy party and they had the little tiny eclairs, man, that was my favorite dessert ever. When I first started experimenting with making cream puffs, a lot of people had a lot of different opinions about how difficult they were to make. And I'd seen them made on cooking shows and it didn't seem that challenging. And then I realized so many people talked about different things that would affect it. And I didn't try it for a long time. And then I decided to try cream puffs and I made cream puffs. I couldn't have asked for a better recipe to be made. It worked out exactly perfect. And I was so proud of myself and I made so many cream puffs. Some of you know my grandma, and some of you saw that she just recently had a birthday and she turned 91. But when she turned 80, we had a really big surprise party for my grandma and I made over 200 cream puffs. So I'd like to say that I'm pretty experienced at making cream puffs. So you can imagine my frustration and disappointment when I first started making gluten-free cream puffs and they were flat little pancakes. But it was okay. I just would pipe my little cream filling on top and just eat it as a little dessert. It was okay, but it wasn't a cream puff or eclair. So let's get to the recipe. And as you can see, really not very many ingredients at all. And if you've never seen a cream puff made before, it's a really interesting dough that you make. And it's really interesting. You cook it first and it just, it, you don't understand what's happening, but it all comes together. It's like magic. So first thing we're gonna do is make the cream filling because we want that to be nice and chilled before we pipe it into our, our cream puffs. So in a saucepan, I'm gonna add in, I've got two cups. I've got one cup of milk and one cup of heavy cream. So two cups of half and half in my saucepan. I've got a third cup of honey. As always, I'll give you the equivalence to sugar. About an eighth of a teaspoon of salt or just a big pinch. And then I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch. And just dump that in. Be a little challenging to stir until the honey starts dissolving, but do your best. And it's okay if this isn't all the way mixed in yet. So I'm just gonna turn that on about medium low heat while I finish getting my eggs ready. So I just need two egg yolks. And I've mentioned before, the easiest way I have found to separate eggs. And whenever I make puddings or custards, fillings like this, I always pick off the little white bits on the egg yolk. It just makes it easier that you don't have to strain your custard later. And if you don't want to make this extra effort, you don't have to. And if at any point you feel like you have curdled or cooked your egg mixture too much, you could just strain it anyways. And then just save your egg whites for something else. I'm gonna move my hot pad over here and my egg yolks. I'm gonna turn the heat up to just medium. And we are gonna stir that constantly once it comes up to a boil. But while it's still heating up, I'm gonna come over here to my two egg yolks. And there is a little bit of milk and half and half in there, which I find 
it really helps to mix them together well. And so I'm just gonna use my same whisk and whisk these for a good minute. And then I just have this on a hot pad so when I'm stirring in the hot milk mixture, it will not slide around my stove top. Stir this constantly until it thickens and boils. Now that it's boiling, we're gonna boil and stir for one minute. Although we've been stirring the whole time. After your one minute is up, we're gonna pour and whisk about half of this into our egg yolks. And then right back into our saucepan, whisking constantly. Except when you scrape your measuring cup. And boil and stir for one more minute. Splattery everywhere. After one minute, turn off the heat. Move back over to your hot pad. And I have two tablespoons of butter cut up and room temperature. And you wanna just whisk that in, they'll melt. And two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste. I've mentioned this before. I always make sure to get all of it. And give this a really good whisk. Once you've got that all mixed together, switch back to my spatula and we're gonna pour this into a bowl. And get a piece of plastic wrap and we're gonna go right on top of the custard. You don't want this to develop a skin. You could have used a vanilla bean in this and you would have split the vanilla bean, scraped out the seeds, put in the, the bean and the seeds all in the milk mixture and just cook all of that. And then when you're ready to put it in this bowl, you would just remove the, the pod. Or just regular vanilla extract. This pastry cream is so versatile, it can be whatever flavor you'd like it to be. You could do uh, some kind of fruit flavored, almond extract, coffee flavored. It's really whatever flavor you want it to be. And we want that to cool off all the way. Once it's room temperature, I'll put it in the fridge. I'm gonna make cream puffs and eclairs. Just to show you, it's the same dough. One cookie sheet, I'm gonna put the little cream puffs and then the other cookie sheet, I'll do, I'll, they'll just be mini eclairs, but it all works the same anyways. And I'm gonna show you the way that I learned to make these, which is all in the saucepan with a spoon and your muscle. I know a lot of people will do this in a food processor or they'll put it in a stand mixer or even use a hand mixer. So in my saucepan, half a cup of water and I've got four tablespoons of butter that are cut up. And then I've got two eggs here that we're not ready for yet, but they are also room temperature. And this saucepan is a little bigger than what I need, but it will be fine. It gives me a lot more room to really give this a good stir when we go to stir in the eggs. So I'm gonna go about medium high heat and we want that to come up to a boil. I've got a pastry bag here. I don't have a tip on it, but I do have it folded over just so none of my batter or dough leaks out when I'm not ready for it to. But that's ready. My cookie sheets are ready. So I have a third of a cup of my gluten-free flour mix and I have a third of a cup of cassava flour. But cassava flour is from a root and they actually make tapioca starch out of this same root vegetable. If you've ever used it before, you'll notice it's kind of similar to tapioca starch, of course, but also potato starch or potato flour, if you've ever used potato flour. And if you've used those, you'll know that sometimes they're really sticky. And if you use too much, it can really make your, whatever you're making, a little bit gummy and sticky and that's what it will do, a little bit gluey. But in this particular recipe, cassava flour works so well. 
it really helps provide that extra stickiness. Because this dough uses eggs, it was a really tricky thing to not use the xanthan gum because I wanted it to be able to stick together without adding an extra egg because the extra egg would add more liquid than what we need for this recipe. And it was trying to find a balance between the flour combinations and, and amounts and what else I could do without adding an extra egg to make it stick together. And this cassava flour does the trick perfect. So a third cup of each of those. I also have a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, which is not traditional at all when you're making this kind of pastry dough. But it works really well in the gluten-free version. It helps to give it the rise that we need. And it also, for some reason, this combination makes it so my cream puffs do not collapse. Once your water and butter are up to a boil, I'm just gonna dump in my flour, salt, baking powder, and cassava flour, all in one and then vigorously stir. But I like a wooden spoon because you can really make sure that you're getting all of that flour mashed into this dough. And you'll see that it's pulling away from the sides of the pan and if you look on the bottom, you can see a film of flour. And even though it was in a ball of dough, I kind of spread it out a little bit, set my timer for five minutes, and we're gonna let this cool off and then we'll beat in our eggs. So my dough has been cooling for about five minutes. If you don't wanna use your muscle and a wooden spoon, this is where you would pour this mixture into a stand mixer and it really does make fast and easy work of it, but I didn't learn that way, and I really like using the wooden spoon. So I've got one egg cracked and ready to go, and we'll just pour it in. And you might think it will never come together, but really, just get your muscle in there and mix it together. not to move the pan around. And you can already see how it's changing the texture of the dough. Egg number two. And just mix this till it's really combined. And don't worry if it looks like scrambled eggs, it will all come together. And it's really sticky. I'm trying to give you a good view here. It's really sticky, it looks really gluey. And it will also kind of look like you've added baking powder to it, which is what we did. And we'll just put it in our piping bag. And it still is a little bit warm, which is just fine. And a bowl scraper really is so handy to move whatever you're putting in your piping bag down to the end. And don't worry if you don't have a piping bag. You can just do this in a plastic Ziploc bag and bring over a cookie sheet. Make sure you get a good twist. 
my filling is coming out. I always learned that you squeeze with this top hand and that the other hand is to guide the piping bag. And you might have seen me squeeze down here with some frosting or something, but you really want to apply the pressure up here and it will all move down. And then retwist as you need. And then for these, we're just going to do the cream puffs and we're just going to go into a little mound. And don't worry that they look like little mountains. We will smooth out the tops. And it's very sticky. But try to make them all the same size. And I know a lot of people will put a little bit of the dough under the corner of the parchment to hold the parchment in place. But I never like to waste the dough making it stick. And now we're going to do eclairs and we'll just go firm pressure, all the same even thickness. These will be mini eclairs. And when you're starting to get to the end, just get your bowl scraper and just push all of this down to the end. So you make sure to use all of your dough. And the nice thing about this is it's not a lot. It's a really nice amount. Just finish off cream puffs with the rest of my batter or dough. So just get a little bit of water, dip your finger in, and smooth down your tops. This is a really big cookie sheet for four little eclairs, but that's just fine. And they look mostly the same size. These will go for about 20 to 25 minutes. I usually check them at 20, but they usually go about 25 minutes or so. And I never open the oven door to check them. I usually just look through the window and see what's happening. Let me turn this cookie sheet around so you can see my eclairs. There we go. So these went for about 30 minutes in my oven. They're nice and, and golden brown and they really just come right off of the parchment paper. And even if they split a little bit, that's just fine. But I take a knife and I poke a little hole in the bottom and put it on a cooling rack just to help let the steam out. And we'll be poking a hole in the bottom anyways when we fill them. Some of these look like fortune cookies. <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind at all. There's another fortune cookie. <laughs> and this is my only eclair that split on the top. So that's pretty good. And I know that there are some recipes that call for turning the oven off, leaving it cracked a little bit, and letting these cool off to room temperature in the oven. But I've never done that. I see why they would recommend that, but I've always just done this. And in fact, with regular cream puffs, I never did cut a little hole in to, to release the steam. But with gluten-free ones, I really want to make sure that the steam is gone out. And I want them to maintain their crispiness. So now we just wait for them to cool off. I put my pastry cream in the fridge and it's cooling off. I'm going to space these out a little bit more. And even these ones that look like fortune cookies, don't worry, I will fill these up. You'll get a lot of filling in one of these, even if it's split right there. Once your cream puffs and your eclairs are all cooled off and your pastry cream is nice and chilled, you'll want to give this a really good stir. It's like pudding. It's not as thick as pudding, but it's perfect for a cream puff once we fill our cream puffs with this cream filling and stick them in the fridge, this will firm up just a little bit. Enough that it will actually hold a slice, but ooze out a little bit, because it's not super firm, but it will stay in there. Before we fill these, 
I want to show you what one looks like on the inside. This was one of my fortune cookie looking cream puffs. And even though they're not completely hollow like you would expect out of a cream puff, there is a lot of room for filling in there. And once we fill these, I'll cut one open and show you that as well. Save that for a treat for yourself. And I've got another pastry bag here. It doesn't really matter what kind of a tip. This is actually a star tip, but it's a smallish tip that I can poke into the bottom of these. And just very carefully, you'll have extra pastry cream left over. Just put as much in there as you want. And I've got my bowl scraper again. And then you just get a cream puff. I usually try to go in where there's kind of a crack already or where I slid it with a knife. And you'll be able to feel when they fill up. And if you get a little over full, just scrape off any excess. And for the eclairs, they're a little bit trickier. They did sink just a little bit, but I think that was more due to my piping technique than anything else. But I'll just go in where my slit was and I'm making a mess of that one. These ones didn't puff up as much, but you can just make a little cut That one's very full. But you want to go one direction and then I'll turn it and go the other direction. Making a mess over here. And if you get too much filling and it starts to ooze out a little bit, just scrape it off a little bit. But they look really good. Don't forget about our little one that we cut open. You'll notice how much pastry cream is left over, probably about half of it. All you would have to do is just a double batch. I usually just do them in a single batch. It's easier to manage the dough and then you know that you've got the right consistency. But you can do a double batch. But you saw how fast and easy they were to come together. It's no problem to just make another batch. So right here, I've got one teaspoon of butter and about a quarter of a cup of chocolate chips. And we'll just melt this in the microwave and then we can dip our tops. And we'll try one of these while we're waiting. So good, so good. If you didn't want to use butter, you could use coconut oil. Or you don't have to use butter or coconut oil. You can just melt the chocolate and dip them in that. It does help the chocolate to be a little more fluid. That pastry cream is so good. It almost tastes like vanilla ice cream. It's really good. Once your chocolate is mostly melted, I just keep stirring it. It's pretty chunky, but just keep stirring it till it's all the way melted. You want it to be thick enough to hold its shape on top of your cream puffs, but not so thin that it will all just run off. And of course you could put this in a piping bag and pipe it on top if you want to, but I usually just dip them in. And that's looking really good. I'm not going to dip all of these, just a few of them, but be careful not to press too hard that you'll squish out your filling. And I usually just twist it around in there. And there we go. Just give it a twist. Let any excess drip off. It's another fortune cookie shaped one.
How fun are these? And if you really wanted to get fancy, you could make some buttercream or some other kind of frosting and do little rosettes on top. Very messy, but so much fun. And for the eclairs, this is such a small amount of chocolate, it really hardens up pretty quickly. And you could just spoon this on. And some of my filling is dripping out. These are so fast and easy to make. You could even do your pastry cream the day before. And because the dough doesn't really have any flavor, it's not sweet, which means they can be made savory too. You could do some kind of cheese filling, maybe a ham and cheese filling. They're really versatile with however you wanna fill them, but they look really good. And these will last in the fridge. I've never had them last longer in my fridge than a week, but I do know that they last at least a week. But so good and so fun and so cute. And I'm gonna cut one of these open to show you how full they are. And I've kept it upside down. Sometimes I'll do that if my opening at the bottom is too big. I'll place them upside down while they're in the fridge until this pastry cream will firm up a little bit more. As you saw, it's not super runny. And these ones, they're staying in, but if you accidentally make a hole too big, then your pastry cream might ooze out the bottom. So I'll keep this one upside down for now. But let's take a look inside. Be careful not to squish it out. So, so good. You have to make these. They are just crispy on the outside. And then the filling is so perfect. Just the right amount of sweet. Make this recipe. And then tell me. Tell me how it turns out. Tell me what you think of it. If this is something that you were missing, let me know. It took me a long time to get a recipe that would work. I had a lot of failures in the beginning. But after many trials and errors, I, I found the right combination of flours that would work for me. And I know in my flour mix, some of you can't have some of those flours. Experiment. There might be one that you find that works better than what I have found. And even if you try and you fail in the beginning, if you're experimenting with some different flowers, even if they fail, they're not bad. They don't taste bad. You just can't feel them. As I mentioned, some of the earlier ones I made, I could get them to hold a shape until they cooled off. And as they cooled off, all they would just collapse. And then in that case, especially these, these eclairs, and they did sink in the middle. If you maintain the same thickness when you're piping the eclairs and it's really uniform, this will show you how ununiform your piping skills are, which my piping skills are. But if you maintain the same thickness all the way through, they rise better. And of course, because I'm filming it and showing you today is when they decide to sink in the middle. But I was still able to fill it up and it still looks really good. Let's cut this one open and I'll show you too. Again, be very gentle to not squish your filling out. We gotta quit cutting these open. I'm gonna eat them all. So, so good. I hope you make this recipe. I hope you like it as much as I do. They're not the prettiest cream puffs or eclairs that you've ever seen, but they sure taste good. Don't forget, my cookbook is ready. I'll, I, as I mentioned, I'll put a link below. Go check that out. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. I'm so happy that it's finally here. Thank you so much for everybody that requested a cookbook. I hope you love it as much as I do. And tell me, tell me when you get it, what you make first. It might be a recipe that is here on my channel already. You might find a new recipe in there that will be coming soon. There's so many recipes when I was writing that and I thought oh, I haven't made this one yet or this one or this one. I have so many more recipes to keep sharing with you. And now I can share them here and in your own kitchen whenever you want. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and we'll see you on the next one.